educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the July 28th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, hey, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Now, this you send to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tigers, and well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Less Show. Right now, I've got a slightly mixed bag out here. The uh, semis just went to slightly negative, down one point, basically flat. Otherwise, you've got the Dow up 231, seven tenths of a percent. Same percentage to the, uh, for the S&P. That's 28 points. About the same percentage for the Russell. That's up 11 points. NASDAQ 100 is up less than two tenths of a percent, 22 points there. That's going to make Stevie say, hmm, something to think about. But that's just simply because it has not taken out a key level of resistance. We'll take a look at that. If you take a look at the uh, gold, is up uh, trading out at 1771. Silver's up nine, is trading up a buck 30, trading out at 1991. Lights we crude is off 55 pennies, 96.73 is a print there. Natural gas down 23 cents, so 30 treasury up 17 ticks, trading out at 143.09. Now, leading the charge dollar wise, the upside HKD, AMTD Digital Inc. up 80 bucks, 104%. I don't know, maybe that's an IPO. Equinix is not an IPO, it's up 57 bucks, nearly 9%. Wingstop, you know, I stopped at a Wingstop, I didn't really care for it, but it's up 21% or 20 buck Roonies out there. MSCI, it's up 20 bucks. West Pharmaceuticals up 17. So we got some movers. We also have some shakers. Those shakers are Charter Communications off 39 bucks, 8%. Teleflex off 22 bucks or 8%. Everest Real Estate uh, down 7%. Stanley Black & Decker down about 14% uh, or 16 bucks. FTI Consulting off 16 bucks, nearly 9%. So we got plenty to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. I see one question here from Johnny in the dense. Says, Steve, do you think this move up in the S&P is still a counter trend rally? Absolutely, positively. But it's the type of rally, uh, Johnny, that uh, may last through September. So it won't look like a counter trend rally. It'll look like it's all over, but uh, it ain't all over. It's not over until the fat lady, or that could be Stevie, Stephanie, we'll just call him Stephanie, sings. And that is not the case. Ain't doing any singing just yet. So we'll come back to that, uh, uh, Johnny D. But uh, let's do this here. Let's go take a look at what Stevie is concerned with. Let's stay on this black background chart out here and just simply go to the uh, right here, our equity futures. So now, if you take a look, we've got a, we've got a totally diverging message out here. What I mean by that, you know, You've got the ES Mini. Now, the ES Mini never confirmed a top out there. And remember, we took a look at it. We said it, it's, it's, it never made it close enough to the uh, 1 to 1 A to B equals CD level, which was uh, 4034. Well, it did that yesterday. It tagged it. But it also closed above the top of the daily profile. You close above the top of the daily profile. You may have a change in trend. I do believe we have a change in trend. I do believe that change in trend is going to last for a couple of, uh, well, many weeks out here. Uh, so a couple of months. 
Um, and that, that's really its message from a daily standpoint. So you've got the ES Mini that is suggesting that its next price move is 41.19. That's the next. One, that's the 1.272 expansion of that A to B leg. Now, if we take a look at the NQ, now so let's go actually down. Let's go down to the Dow Equity Future contract, which also yesterday attained the one-to-one -one level. Price is trading above that right now. It's also closed above the top of its daily profile. Its next price target is 32,943. Now, I'm not guaranteeing it's going to hit those levels, but until a bearish reversal candle forms, that is the next price target area. In the case of Russell 2000, yesterday it negated its sell the D point. On Friday, it generated a key reversal bar as well as a bear sash candle. That set up at 1845.60 resistance. Price closed above that yesterday. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that right now. There we go. And so it negated that signal, and that suggested its nice price. Its next price move is 1876 and change out there. The issue that Stevie has out here, it's the issue that everybody should have, is that the NASDAQ has not negated its sell the D point pattern. And it always says caution. Well, maybe it doesn't always say caution to you. To Stevie, it says caution out here. Now, price is trading above the top of its daily profile. It should be able to take out 12,698.50. Maybe it does it by the end of the day. Maybe it does it in the next few minutes out here. But really, it's a close above that level that'll be key. It's not what it does between now and uh, the uh, contract close out here. So, um, is this telling us something about Apple? I don't know what this is telling us, but we've got one of the uh, three, one of the four, and perhaps the most important one that has not confirmed that the rally should continue higher. It's about the only chart that I really think I can come up with that um, that has that signal. Now, if we just switch over and take a look, so it's coming both from the daily time frame. Let's change windows here, and then the four and five hour time frame charts. So, uh, if we take a look, I'll just simply expand out the five hour chart. And what you will see out here, this is really kind of interesting as well, is that uh, you've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top that formed at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on July 22nd. And until price closes above that high, 12,698.50, okay, the high of that session, that also created that daily bear sash candle, this pattern is still in play. And you are now in bar number 8. And uh, bar number 8 has this, uh, let me hit the update button. No, it has not. Bar number eight has not yet taken out the high from bar number four, five o'clock of last night. That's at 12,690. But a spike above 12,690, whether it's during this five-hour session or the next one, which takes us into the contract close, or the one at 11 o'clock tonight, that could be setting up a TD nine count top out there. Could be. Don't have that pattern because we don't have bars eight yet at the high of the session, but it could happen on bars nine or bars 10, really not 10, but the bar following bar number nine. Now in the four hour chart, you got the exact same pattern out here. What you don't have is a TD nine count or some kind of topping signal. So you've got the daily and the five hour chart that are just simply saying to you and I, not so fast. Perhaps Apple's out with earnings at 4.30, I believe at 4.30. So perhaps that gets resolved and uh, it price closes above those levels, then it is up, up and away. But not until that unfolds out there. Is there any other pattern that I've got that I can take a look at? The only other pattern is really coming from the New York Stock Exchange. If we switch over and take a look at the indice charts out here, it doesn't matter whether it's the full New York Stock Exchange, which in the bottom right is in bar number nine, or if we take a look at the international, this is the international stocks, international 100 stocks for the New York Stock Exchange. That formed, it's completed the TD9 cal pattern today. And if you take a look at the U.S. stocks out here, that's in bar number eight today. So the New York Stock Exchange is saying, hmm, prepare for a retracement. See Rhodes with TFNF. Right in a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this, combined with the approvals of all major operational, as well as environmental permits, this distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner 
Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Free at 1 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go out to our uh, phone snafus. Do we have a caller in the line? Do we have John from Philly on the line? We've got clicking noises. But uh, phone snafus. Well, sorry about that. So, uh, John, I'll wait to see if we get that uh, resolved. I know you're calling to talk about gold, um, but I'll uh, wait just a uh, wait, wait uh, at least for this segment. We've got some other things we can take a look at, see if we can get that uh, resolved out there. So let's do this here. I do have a uh, gold chart up on our screen, but we'll come back to that uh, if we can get John on the line. Let's, say, let's go to our first question out here. First question, let me see, is coming in from uh, – well, let's, go, let's do this here. Well – Let's, let's let's just stay with the with the order. So the first order, this is coming from HD. HD says, uh, hey, Steve, uh, would you please look at GDX and GDXJ for entry and support and resistance? So let's uh, move over to those white background charts. We'll get our multi time frame, our three three time frame uh, set of charts out there uh, for you. Of course, right now you're going to take a look at gold. We'll switch over to the correct area that we want to take a look at. Give me a moment to get there. So we've got daily, weekly, monthly. So we'll take a look at the GDX. So here we take a look at the GDX, what do we know? So with regard to a bottoming pattern out here, if you take a look at the C to D leg, the uh, low out here occurred uh, three days ago on uh, July 25th, and that happened to be, and that was confirmed the very next day, July 26th, with wave number seven. You'll see some roads bumped in indicator signals here, but we do not have a bullish reversal candle, and therefore that bottom has not been confirmed. But you do have wave number seven. Thank you to Saratoga Bob, and then John from Philly as well for pointing that pattern out. And now price is trying to get above or close above the center of its bullish structured profile. So that would be a close above 26 bucks, we're at 25.95. So, um, you know, you're looking for an entry price. Where's an entry price? What price is not doing is, if it pulled back maybe just a tad. I'm going to switch over to my other charts out here. I just want to see HD what the volume um, matrix is in as far as uh, today's volume. And today's volume so far is 19 million shares. That swing point that formed that uh, wave number seven is 29 million shares. So uh, likely going to be some light volume, but it would have been more ideal. I think it would have been more ideal if price could have at least tested today 2542, the high of that swing point. Only got down to 2567. 
So I don't have that going for us. So as far as an entry point here, I would say it could be anywhere between 2519 and where you're trading right now if you have full conviction in that uh, trade. Now your resistance or your battleground level inside the GDX to the upside is going to be 2734 and 2761. Support at this stage here, I really don't have support, so to speak, because we didn't get any type of bullish reversal candle. So I, you just have to uh, put your tuck your stop underneath the uh, low uh, that took place four days ago. So here's the issue with regard to the GDX. The daily has at least a wave seven bottom. The weekly's got nothing. Bar number seven, an A to B equals CD that extends all the way down to the 21 area or 22 area. If you look at the monthly time frame chart out here, HD, um, there's nothing here that says definite bottom and price might be targeting 2210, might be. So and yet we have gold that is taking off to the upside. And again, we'll come back to gold. If uh, John is not uh, able to get on the uh, phone, uh, with us and you know i'll just simply go through the through the gold charts there but i'd like to be able to try to answer his uh his question uh, on that so with regard to the gdx i'd say it's between 2519 and where you're trading and uh, where price is trading right now um and you're looking for a close of about 26 bucks to at least give you that move to 2734 2761 now you also asked about gdxj so gdxj those are the junior gold miners so let's see if we've got some type of patterns out here Okay, permanent uh, phone snafus. Okay, so I got that message. Now, here in the case of the uh, GDXJ, also wave number seven bottom out here, but this does have a confirmed uh, roads momentum indicator signal. Now, this is in an A to B equals CD to the upside. Your resistance level is 3374 out here. I'll simply draw in the A to B point. Here's A to B, and then we'll move that over to the C area just so we can see where the one to one falls. So get that, get that up to about right here. And uh, that's going to take us really right to the top of this profile. So here's my suggestion is that on the GDXJ, uh, hold off just yet. You're up near resistance. I struggle to tell people to buy resistance. I'd rather you buy above resistance if, in fact, it failed. But maybe you're going to get a retracement or a pullback. So the pullback area that I'd be looking for because it's a bullish structure profile would be 3150. So 3150 should be your target to the downside there. No bottom patterns on the uh, weekly or the uh, monthly at this stage out there. So it basically, I think, may boil down to Goldilocks. So we're fortunate enough. We do have John on the phone. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for uh, – oh, well, we did. Oh, well, bummer. All right, so I'm going to do this, and I really appreciate the efforts that John is making out here. But let's go to uh, gold. And uh, try to figure out what it is communicating to us out here. So, going to uh, switch screens. We're going to go to the black background screens. And we're going to go to really one chart. Although I see a, a message in here from Brent in Martinez, California. So I see he's also asking about gold. So, uh, so this will be helpful here. As soon as I can find out where is that chart. What did I do with it? Here we go. Okay. So now we've got this is the December contract for gold. And what we're going to see here is although everything looks rosy, and I'm not saying it's not, but uh, what Price has not been able to do is move over the goal line. And the goal line for gold is at 17. Where's my data box? Give me a moment here to get this up here. Oh, that's weird. It shows a data window. Okay. Well, that's odd. Very odd. All right. So what's Stevie going to do here? Going to try that data window once more? Shoot. I don't see it anywhere. Okay, well, uh, so it looks like it's at 1778.20. Well, I know I'm going to figure this out. Give me a moment here. I want to just see exactly. So the 1778.20 is the top of the daily profile. And we're going to turn off the daily profile so I can make sure exactly. It's really right around the same area. But I turn off the top of the daily. Now we've got the top of the weekly, 1778. So 1778 for the uh, weekly 1778.20 for the daily. So we know where the sellers are hanging out here. And I would say that if gold, the December contract is what we're looking at right now, if gold can close above 1778.20, then we likely do have a, a change in trend and a move to the upside out there. So with regard to the GDX and GDXJ, again, because of the core, I'm not going to put the correlation chart up there, just so it'll take too long to uh, do that. Um, if you get a close above, uh, so until gold at least, because of the directional correlation, that exists out there, 
uh, maybe you're going to get that pullback in the GDXJ and in the GDX towards the center of their profile. But if gold is able to close above 1778.20 tomorrow, then on a weekly basis, uh, what we've got here and on a daily basis, we likely have a change in trend signal. Now, Brent was also asking about gold and asking about uh, what it looked like uh, trading in all currencies. And there was there's the only issue is with the, the yen. But maybe that's been resolved. Uh, I haven't looked at it for a couple of hours. So let's go take a look at that chart, which is this chart right here. Now, folks, in order for anything, quite frankly, anything of significance to have any kind of, uh, of uh, sustained rally, what you want to see is you want to see that instrument moving higher in all the major currencies. You don't want just people who trade gold in dollars seeing that go up because maybe it's going up in dollars, whereas in yen right now, it's actually moving lower. So the folks buying gold in terms of yen are not yet bought into the idea that gold is going to rally. That's different in terms of euros and pounds. Uh, so you've got a little bit of divergence there, Brett. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So the last thing on uh, gold out here, we've got the multi-time frame charts up on our screen. And uh, you can see on the daily time frame, there's also a, a TD9 count breakdown resistance level at 17.7080. So that whole that whole area that we took a look at, uh, that price needs to close above, that's really important. The five-hour time frame chart, that's your bottom right, is in bar number eight of a TD9 count. So that could be signaling a, a, short, a top uh, that could form out here. Uh, don't have that signal yet inside the uh, four-hour chart. The 120-minute chart has a TD9 count top that's in place. Price uh, here it would need to close above that high. That high is 1771.60. So you need that close on a two-hour basis to negate that pattern out there. Uh, the 
30 minute chart has got a Rhodes momentum indicator top. Its price would need to close below 1763.20 to suggest a uh, further retracement out there. So that's kind of gold. And the uh, so it looks great, but right now the goal has not, uh, the ball has not been uh, play, uh, taken over the goal line out here. And so you got the defense that is in goal line stance. So we'll see who wins that uh, battle. Uh, we had a, a request to take a look at uh, Qualcomm. QCOM, uh, that is from uh, G-Man inside the Tiger's Den. So let's get over to those charts here, daily, weekly, and monthly. Now, what I don't know was what the question was, but we're just going to take a look at it. So what's Qualcomm doing out here? Um, so what is it doing? Well, today, right now, what it's doing, it's just consolidating with inside its uh, daily profile out here. And that is between the range. And it pulled back this morning to the bullish structured area. And that bullish structured area is between 146.69 and 142.97. Now, if price closes today above 147.54, then price will have tested both the support of that bullish zone as well as the top of the profile. And really, if you can close above that, it should be on its merry way to the upside. As we look at the weekly time frame chart, uh, I don't know if we've got to buy the D point pattern. Let's I'll pull this back out here. Um, yeah, probably not. So I don't have a bottom pattern. That doesn't mean it hasn't bottom. In fact, not always the tools that we use will identify a bottom. So what do we do when we don't have an A to B equals CD pattern or a Rhodes momentum indicator signal or wave number seven or a TD9 count? Well, then what we have to do is we have to use our support resistance areas and really resistance areas if you look into the upside. Well, and if price is able to close above the top of a profile, then for that time frame, what you have is a bullish message, unless you have some type of a uh, pattern that uh, says be cautious. Well, we don't have that pattern out here inside of Qualcomm, and price is above the top of its profile. And this says that longer term, what Qualcomm should do is target the 172.99 level. The monthly time frame chart has a confirmed roads to indicator top. And what price did was it pulled back. This is also a bullish structured monthly profile, pretty large zone out there because between 95, 55 and 119, 68. Nonetheless, the support area could be the center where there's both buyers and sellers. That's what took place last month. That, in essence, is what's taken place this month. So support is held inside of a Qualcomm. So I like what the stock chart looks like. We would like it even better if price would close the day back back above 147.87. But if it doesn't do that, then maybe what Qualcomm is going to do here is churn a bit, maybe even get down to the 149297 level. So I hope that helps you out, uh, G-Man, and thanks so much for the request. Duffy wanted to take a look at EKK, and the question there was, I uh, don't remember, e EXK, not EKK. So, okay. So here we know there's no EKK, so that's a pretty helpful. Uh, I'm not sure who that's helpful to. Uh, but it is pretty helpful. So EXK on a daily basis is above Stevie's green line. It's actually, a, a, so I don't know which green line you're talking about out here, Duff. Uh, but uh, the one green line that you wanted to see close above is $3.63. And that's the TD9 count breakdown level. This has a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. That was confirmed on July 7th out there. Price is uh, above the top of its daily profile, and if it can close above 363, EXK will be signaling to you that you have a confirmed change in trend. When I look at the monthly time frame chart, this has a confirmed TD9 count bottom. This suggests that over time, price should at least go target 432, the oscillator and change line. And I think that might have been the line that uh, Duffy was asking about, and it's actually a red line on the daily time frame. But that uh, isn't matter to us at this stage. What matters to us is can price close above 363? And if it does, then you should be off to the races, and those races should at least take you to the 432, 456, 477 area. So, Duffy, I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, uh, to that. I don't even – EXK is that uh, – what is EXK? I know it's three letters out there. I got that much. Endeavor Silver out there. And silver's having a nice day. So that actually kind of falls in line with what we're looking at in the GDX and gold. And that price hasn't taken out the key resistance levels out here. So maybe there's some kind of signal. I, I, don't, I don't know if there is or there isn't. Let's go to our next question. Next question coming in from uh, Nicholas A. Nick writes in, uh, good morning, Steve. If you would go over meta, please. Gap down today. Is it close to a, a bottom entry point? Think and have a great day and a better one tomorrow. Well, I will. Let's go take a look at I think I've got this set up here on this uh, multi-time frame set of charts, and that is uh, Facebook or Google, or I mean Facebook or Meta. Now, on a monthly basis, what you have out here is you've got a TD9 count bottom. That could be a lower low uh, at the end of this month, but uh, at the end of this month, next week, 
what is it, 28th? Yeah, next week out here, you'll have a confirmed uh, TD9 count bottom from a monthly time frame. The weekly time frame has a confirmed Roach Mintum indicator bottom. It's a hammer candle that formed on uh, June 24th. Now, if price were to close below 154.25, that pattern gets negated. Price is pulling back. It is testing the swing point from June 23rd, but it has not tested that low. What I do know, the volume there was 40.4 million shares, and you've done more than that today. You are already at um, 52 million shares. So it hasn't busted through those lows. It is a slightly higher low, but it's not a slightly higher low versus the last time price was down on July the 1st, and that was with 31 million shares. So has it formed a bottom? Well, it still maintains that road's momentum indicator on the daily time frame. It's just that we would wish, Nicholas, that price was testing that swing point with lighter volume. Maybe that test comes tomorrow. And if it does and it's on lighter volume, then you've got a monthly that says you should move higher. You've got a weekly that says you should move higher. And then you'd have a daily that says that gives you that same message out there. So I hope that answers your question with regard to uh, Facebook. And uh, thanks so much for the request. Next question coming in from Hector and Patty. And Hector and Patty want to take a look at uh, ExxonMobil and Google. So let's, oops, uh, what the heck, let's get ExxonMobil fired up here. The reason why I went back to that just daily, weekly, and monthly view is because it doesn't take as long to update all of the charts out here. But uh, it is what it is. Um, Son and I come in uh, from uh, Eastern Sierra fly fishing trip. Now, that is pretty cool out there. And you're going to catch it on the archive. Okay, great. So we've got ExxonMobil out here. And the question is, can I give them support and resistance and near-term targets? So you've got a TD9 count on the monthly time frame. So longer term, that suggests that the oscillator and change line and it should test each other. Right now, that OUL is at 76.27. You have a Rhodes momentum indicator top on the weekly time frame. So you got two tops out there. And price is just consolidating with inside its weekly profile. Your resistance level, first you got the oscillator and change line that is basically tested here earlier this week. That high, 93.37. But your real range is between 81.92 for support 9506 for resistance and then you have that final resistance which is the bearish shooting star on a weekly base from the week that ended june the 10th and that high is 105.57 the daily time frame shows that today is going to form bar number nine of a td9 count of course it can get a higher high tomorrow this suggests uh, that uh, we should see a short-term top form on exxon mobile between today and tomorrow and that short-term top would suggest price pulling back and testing its oscillator and change line. And that's in the 88.20 level. A quick scan of the intraday charts out there. You've got a, a topping pattern, a TD9 count on the 65-minute chart. 50 minutes got a road spent indicator top. But uh, pay attention to the uh, daily, weekly, and monthly. Uh, again, uh, you've got a TD9 count top. Uh, it could fail, but I would be uh, cautious with regard to Exxon Mobil. Steve Rhodes with TFN. You're right now. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro dollar, Pound dollar, Aussie dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Back, uh, folks, let's go to our next question. It says to take a look at uh, Microsoft out here. Uh, I believe that came in from the uh, Tiger's Den. And uh, my apologies, I don't recall who had, uh, who had asked about that. But if we take a look at Microsoft, it looks pretty good. Now, I, I'm not really, this is not an A to B equals CD pattern. The reason that I say that is because this retracement, that means the low that formed on July 14th was over a 0.782 retracement. And so for me, that just simply negates that pattern out there. It's like, you know, so, but what we can say about Microsoft, you have good volume today. You've got 19 million shares so far. It's taken on a swing point from back over here on June the 1st. That swing point has volume of uh, 25 million shares. So it uh, looks like you're going to be able to take that level out. That would be your level of resistance, that high out here, uh, just because of the swing point where price had reversed, 277.69. If price closes above that, then what Microsoft is suggesting it wants to make run the 293.30, 294.51 area, that would be its TD9 count breakdown and then the top of its uh, weekly profile out there. What Microsoft does have on a weekly basis is a TD9 count bottom. So it really should be able to make that move. 293.30 is a likely price target. Uh, we've got a request to take a look at uh, the SMHs. Uh, this is coming from SNP inside the uh, Tiger's Den. So we'll get that up on our screens here momentarily. And the SMHs actually um, did take out a resistance. So this had a confirmed sell the D point. That was confirmed last Friday as well with the bear sash candle, which is one of the, that, so that's, it's odd to me. So why isn't the NQ and the NASDAQ 100 doing the same? Now maybe they have in the last uh, 30 minutes or so since we've been talking, but when we started the show, we didn't see that. So in the case of the SMHs, what they're signaling to you and I is they should make a move to the 243.70 level. 243.70 is the TD9 count breakdown area. Price is above the top of its weekly profile, so that looks up pretty good out here. It's back inside, or it's attempting to get back inside the uh, monthly profile. The counter, the, the counter trend move on a rally inside the SMHs would uh, stop at uh, 246.42. That's, that's the center of its uh, bullish structured monthly profile out there. And so that would be an area to watch on a move higher. So it looks to me like the SMHs want to make a move to 243.70 to the 246.42 level. So I hope that helps you out. SNP, last question that I see inside the Tiger's Den is uh, Amazon, AMZN. So let's go take a look at it, see what it is doing out here. This is for Coda. No, Coda, we have not taken a look at Amazon. So we absolutely will do that uh, for you here. And when we take a look at Amazon, what do we have? We've got a consolidation with inside its daily profile right now. And so that range coda, support down at 111.16, resistance at 125.50. The weekly time frame and the daily time frame have Roachman to indicator bottom patterns out there. So that's good. The weekly time frame shows that price closed above last week, the top of its profile. Right now, this week, you're trading above that. That's what you want to see. Two confirmed signals above that high or that the profile level, the top of the box, that is at 
So if price goes above 121.40, that's going to suggest a further move higher. Now price may find or will we'll find resistance at about the 128.99 level, uh, but it still would give you, if you close above the top of that weekly profile, that says, okay, you run up to 125.50. If you get above 125.50, then in Amazon, you make a move to the 130.76 range out there. Nothing on the monthly to report to you, so I hope that helps you out, Coda, with regard to Amazon, and you are most welcome. Johnny D is asking about the XLF. So uh, let's do this here. Let's move over to my black background charts, and actually, we can do a quick peek of what's going on inside of the sectors for the S&P 500. So I believe we're in a consolidation, the XLF, but we're going to move over the charts and find out for sure, because I can't remember everything off the top of my head. In fact, I can hardly remember anything. There we go. So the XLF is in the, so here's all the sectors, as well as the uh, S&P 500, or the SPIs, I should say, uh, charts. This is a set of charts that uh, subscribers get every afternoon. And what we can see here is the XLF is trading within a consolidation pattern, which is nice because if it can break that consolidation, Johnny, then you have a measured move equal to that pattern. Now, you've also got resistance at the top of its uh, uh, daily profile out there. I know you're going to ask me what that number is. I need to turn on the data box to see if I can get that. Okay, it's turned on. And uh, that level is 33.16, near 33.17. So I'd say that if you get a close above 33.16 today, then that's going to suggest to you that you have, um, uh, that you have, well, I've got profiles out here. The bottom of the profile is 32.13. The top of the profile is 33.16. And the center is 32.75. So, again, it closed about 33.16 out there. That would then suggest that you've got this potential consolidation measure move breakout. Of course, you'd want to see it close above the top of that profile again tomorrow, two consecutive closes to kind of cement that. There's a couple other consolidations going on. There's at least one other one. That's in the XLY. So you can see that's in the center on the left out there. You're welcome, Johnny. So, and you've got A to B equals CD pattern. So the XLK, you know, the NQ hasn't taken out resistance, but the XLK has definitely done that. It did that uh, yesterday out here. So, again, just trying to figure it out. You get the XLV, uh, 1 to 1, A to B equals C to get you to 138.52. Uh, so let's go take a look at some other questions that have uh, come in. Uh, this one coming in from, so let me make sure I got uh, all, the, all of uh, Brent's questions in here. I did. Okay, so we're good with that. Uh, let's go to the next question. That's coming in from Greg M. And Greg says, would we take a look at STEM? So we will. S-T-E-M. Let me just fire that up here on the black background chart right now. See if there's anything that shows up that's of importance. And the question is, would you look at STEM? I have a small position at 883. Looks like it's trading out at uh, 1032 right now. So good for you. And we'd like to add and hold for a longer term hold. What do you think? So you're getting pretty close to a potential resistance out here, Greg, and that's going to be the top of the weekly profile at 11.92. Uh, today's a nice move because price is above the top of its bearish structure daily profile. It's above a prior swing point from the trading day of June, June 6th. That did 5.6 million. You're already at 6.5. So this is looking uh, pretty good out here. Again, I won't draw in an A to B equals CD because this retracement is just too much. It's more than a 0.786 retracement. So that's really not the pattern. And your question is, well, where is this thing headed to? So that's a great question out there. So we've given you one level of resistance at 1192. If we switch over to the white background charts, what we're going to see is another resistance level for you. And that's going to be at 1166. 1166 is the daily time frame TD9 count breakdown resistance area. And if price can overcome 1166, you're then looking for a move to 1975. So where would you add to this position on this gap up with volume out here? Wow. And on the uh, monthly time frame, you've got a nice TD9 count bottom. So you got bottoms out here on the monthly. The uh, weekly's got a TD9 count bottom. And the daily, yeah, I don't really see anything, but I have to I'd have to really invest. Yeah, I just don't see that the bottom doesn't matter. This this is bottom price as well. This is above the top of the profile, daily profile. So you definitely have a bottom out there. Where do you enter this? I'd say the retracement would be all the way back to about 868 out there. But I don't know that, that you're really going to get back out there. So you're headed into resistance, potentially, 1166 So not in 1192 So now may not be the good time to add that position. But I'd hold it. And it looks like you're in a pretty good position there. So, uh, yes, Scott, I did talk about the SMHs, uh, I believe, even during this segment. So uh, if you can uh, re-listen to, uh, uh, to the archive, that would be uh, great out there. And uh, thanks so much for the uh, request. A quick uh, peek here. Well, it looks like we're headed to a, a break. 
So I just want to make sure that uh, I've taken care of all the questions inside the Tiger's Den. Uh, G Motion wants to take a look at Tesla. So we'll get back from this break. We'll take a look at uh, Tesla, TSLA. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. We've got the chart for Tesla up on our screen, and you can clearly see that today is going to complete a TD9 count top. That suggests, and we've got the oscillator and change zone, which has changed colors. So that suggests that price should pull back to test that area. Currently, that's printed at 772. Now, whatever today's high is, if tomorrow price closes above that, this pattern gets negated, tells us about a strong momentum move to the upside, with the next price target being 90356. So that's what's going on inside Tesla. Should form a short-term top uh, today. NVIDIA is a request inside the uh, Tiger's Den. That is from Coda. So let's get that up on our screen out here. Um, see if we can uh, analyze this, see what kind of patterns we've got. So NVIDIA is uh, taking on a prior swing point. The uh, volume on that swing point is, well, that would have been nice if I had held it there, was uh, 55 million. And today so far, 
you've done 33 million. So you might be a little light in the lopers on being able to take out that level to form an A to B equals CD to the upside. Price is also dealing with resistance at 181.44. So you're just dealing with a consolidation right now with inside its uh, daily profile, so to speak. But if price can take out and close above 181.44 uh, coda, then you've got a large A to B equals CD to the upside. That would suggest to move up to the 191 to 203 level. So I hope that helps you out. And uh, real quickly, back to the question from Scott. His question was, have the SMHs uh, formed a uh, A to B, confirmed an A to B equals CD to the upside? And the answer is, no, they have not. And here's what we're going to take a look at. Price is trading above its prior swing point in the SMHs. The prior swing point is 232.14, which was also the top of its profile out there. But there was 4.2 million shares. You're doing about 2 million shares right now. This does not mean that price will not continue to move higher. But your question was, is there a confirmed A to B equals C to the upside? And the answer there is no. This next uh, price target out there, well, I don't know what that is. I'd say it's here, right up here, the swing point from uh, June 2nd, between 239 and 249. Folks, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, he is my favorite polar bear, David White. He's up next. Tom O'Brien will take us on home, and I'll be back with you tomorrow at 8 a.m. sharp. Please listen in live. Take care.